actually one of the big things is after everybody is using AI now, where do we stand with regulations and all in terms of healthcare? What if AI does a mistake now? Okay, so what do you think? Again, I have a pet peeve with the recent technological companies. Okay. You can yeah. call them the top five fang or whatever companies. They have become big power players in this world, not just in the economic prowess, but it's affecting humanity. But if you take one of those media houses, means I would consider people like Google, Facebook media houses and compare it with an old school New York Times or any other press from the last 200, 300 years. Those yes. New York Times and is ilk, they took responsibility for a bad publication. Correct. For some reason, the social media publishers have said this is too hard to regulate it. Everybody's job is hard. I do not think that's the right attitude towards human progress. So mm -hmm. if AI can solve problems and not take the responsibility of making errors, is it, should it be a part of humanity? I do not think so. Mm -hmm. The law will take some time. But Correct. humanity and ethics can come first. I have yeah. witnessed hundreds of pitches in which mm. they're like, oh, we are going to make it easier and all those things. And the moment the liability questions come, oh, but the physician is always going to sign off on it. I say, if you give 300 pages to a physician and not even show the algorithm that you use to summarize it into one thing, one sentence that, okay, now you can operate on the patient and okay. telling the physician to trust it or not trust it in five seconds. This is under duress. So yes. I think if we push AI down everybody's throat, I'm not just saying the clinical providers, the patients too. Okay. I do think there's going to be an increase in efficiency. Some companies will make money, some com companies will lose money. But I don't think that's the right direction for humanity. Remember, there is no increasing the pie, okay? Because right. the population of humans are fixed. You're growing at a steady rate. It's not declining in many of the Western countries. So yeah. we are just slicing the pie in a different rate. So I do think humanity and ethics has to take the responsibility of bad decisions and not just say it's too hard. Got it. No, totally hear you. Ethical AI is extremely important for healthcare, especially, right? Yeah. And even today, 70 to 80 percent of the stuff that I, the decisions that I do are not FDA approved. They were made before the FDA came out. Okay. Those right. algorithms, uh, decision-making trees were made before the algorithms came out, or FDA came out. But they were used by scientists without calculators means without Correct. excel sheets okay yeah they used old school statistics and and there were rigorous statistics that were used but none of those studies are applicable today none Correct. okay yeah last week i was at a conference where healthcare and insurance companies were talking about it and i asked a question I'm in New York. Memorial and Sloan Kettering is the pillar of cancer surgery, cancer care in, around the world. They take care of rare cancer, 10 people on two arms, do a basic statistics of chi-square test or T-test, which has been devised 100 years ago. And mm -hmm. then that data is taken, published 10 years later, because that's how long it takes for to do a clinical trial. And from that data, the insurance company uses it to make decisions for two three, four billion people. Means Europe is using data from coming out of the cancer centers in America. Asian, Asian insurance companies are using the same data. Is it fair? Is it ethical? No. I do think the newer Bayesian statistics, AI to look into all the personalized healthcare data will make it better. But we as clinicians, we as the, the providers, both the hospitals as well as the insurance companies included in it has to take some ethical decisions 
in increasing right. the quality of care. Correct. Yeah. No, these are very important actually. And in terms of there is this, there needs to be some proper human and AI collaboration, right? So we need to have you know, some responsibility AI to take and some responsibility AI you know, humans should take. Yeah. Right. So the, one of the terms that was coming out was XAI, explainable AI. And right. So I do think if you want the clinicians to make some data, make sure the algorithm is explainable. Why am I taking this decision of giving pill A to Correct. an African-American woman compared to pill B in an Asian heritage woman? Without yeah. that, you cannot tell a physician or a nurse to do this or do that. People have Correct. to understand why they are doing it and consequences of not doing it. It might be Correct. something wrong, but people need to know. Right. Yeah. No, explainable AI is picking up as well. And it does need to be forefront for healthcare, actually. Yeah. Are you seeing some cases where, when it comes to human and AI collaboration here, are there use cases where humans are definitely better, but we are trying to use AI? Or there are cases where AI is definitely better than humans. I, I do think AI is much better than humans in everything, if not today, in a couple of months or years' time. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, just the amount of data like means I have probably a hundred pounds of textbooks that I have bought in the last twenty-five years. Have I read all of it? No have all of that data in my brain? Absolutely not. Okay. Yes. But with the help of AI, I mean, an AI algorithm can probably read those hundred pounds of pages in a blink of an eye and it Correct. can process it better and, and apply that on my next patient much better than me. <laughs> but that has to be tailored. Uh, Correct. I do not think there is any interest in personalizing AI, there is mm -hmm. only interest in generalizing AI right now. Correct. Yeah. Now, especially for healthcare, because every patient is different and it's going to be different how, as humans, doctors are going to look at it. Mm -hmm. But for AI, if it's a generic one, I think it's not going to go pass through this, right? Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. So I don't, like I said, I was telling, uh, talking to you about the concept of different species of AI. I think that's mm. what is going to be. We don't need general intelligence. Okay. Yeah. We need assistance. We need not humanoid robots necessarily, but we need humanoid assistance that can help us cater this huge vast of knowledge to the huge complexity of this individual. Means Got it. This week, I was talking about, we don't even have a mathematical model of blood pressure. Okay. Today, we can predict with the 90% accuracy within a square mile area of 90% chances of rain. Right. Yes. We have, we, have no, we, should, we have the technology to put all your data in a computer and have a mathematical model of blood pressure. Nobody, right. the sad part is nobody has the intent to do it. Correct. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Because going to Mars is just more sexier. <laughs> You're right. I know. And wherever probably the money, they are following the money here. Yeah. It's sad. Yeah, yeah. No. The potential is huge, definitely. Yeah. I mean, the thing it boils down to what humanity wants and what humanity needs. Correct. Like when I tell people I am just another human being that will hold your hand till you cross over to the other side, people think yeah. that I'm billeting the population, the humanity. I'm like, no. Means I have just read a couple more books in this field than you have. You probably have read a much more field than your field of expertise. Correct. Yeah, but I am going to make this human. When mm -hmm. people say I might be too frank about death, I say, listen, you and I cannot escape death. 
Okay. Right. And right. I can help you make some decisions. I can't make the decisions on your behalf. But mm -hmm. if an AI starts to make those decisions on your behalf, I do think that people will be a little offended. There might be a small group of people who want everything to be given to AI. There are AI marriages today and AI, all those things happening. Correct. Yeah. I do not think this generation of humans right now are willing to do that. Yeah. No, I agree totally. Wow. This has been an amazing discussion. Dr. Neil, I had, before we conclude, I had few things which I wanted to quickly check. One is, is there, before we go, what's that one common misconception about AI in healthcare that you want to dispel? So, two things we touched upon it, I'll re retouch it, is AI is already affecting healthcare right now from the supply chains and things. If it might not have touched the sacred physician patient relationship yet, it is already helping in education. And as the tools get much more involved, I think physicians will start using AI in decision making, not for the right. run of the mill stuff, but right. more people will use this. I do not think bad physicians will use this to become good physicians because mm -hmm. I think the old adage, a fool with a tool is a bigger fool, will still be there. Correct. If you are going to look for a doctor today, definitely look for a doctor who is, who is using the new technologies, including AI, but also make sure he's a good doctor first. Yeah. That is an AI, not that AI is going to take away all the credentials of a, or of a, of a doctor. Yeah. We okay. still need to do our homework to find the, find the physician that gels with our needs. Right. But hopefully they're using the latest technology to take care of it. Wow. I think there is a lot to look forward to with AI in healthcare. And next year will bring even more changes than what we have seen this year. I, right? I think so. I'm hoping more and more interesting things come out. Okay. Thank you so much for this Thank very you. insightful discussion. And Thank I'm you. so glad you were able to make it. And uh, this has been really good. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank, Thank you. you so much. Yeah. Thank you, everyone. Thanks for watching uh, Thank IDA you. podcast. Thank you. Okay. Thank mm -hmm. you.